my screen. Go ahead, Otto. Your we'll have you start with your first thought. Such a great way to connect, isn't it? Nice. It's like uh, reaching out all around the world at this at this moment, which is so fun. Um, I'm going to share my screen and tell everybody a little bit about where we are and what we're up to at this moment. And let us know, guys, if the bandwidth gets wonky for you and you need us to turn off our cameras, okay? Drop it in the chat and then Tony or Ashley will flag us. Great. So, Christy, can you see my screen? Yep, good. Okay. Great. So, we're having a conversation about uh, support. And Otto is someone who is a brand new friend of mine, brand new meeting. We've had a couple conversations. And I'm going to tell you a little more about, um, about our discussion. Today's agenda, we've got, we're going to just talk with Otto, um, introduce him. We've got seven questions that he spent time writing the answers to. And so Shelly, Otto's mom, will be reading those answers. Uh, Christy and I wrote these questions. We thought they would be the most burning questions that people had about you, Otto, and your school experiences. And then at the very end, we'll talk about part two of the course. And for that, Otto, you get to sit and chill out and um, while we explain what that means. Um, so that's our agenda for today. Anything else, Christy? Uh, no, but that we, you know, people can ask questions. Uh, those of us who are on live um, can ask follow-up questions and um, put it in the chat or unmute themselves. That's great. So, um, how I got to know Otto is I put a quick question out to a bunch of professionals that I adore. One of them's named Darlene Hansen. And I said, if you have anybody who would be willing to answer this question, it's what advice do you have for paraprofessionals? And really quickly, I got an email back from Otto and he said, please know your position is valued. Please treat your position as a profession. You are not just an anything. You are the thread that supports a day that can be seamless or completely unraveled. You serve the function of interdependence. You are an integral component to success. So that was my first, you know, email exchange. And I thought, who is this guy? So I say, Otto, tell me more. And I ask this next question. Hey, were you like in inclusive settings or what? Because that's what I do, basically. And he types this. Inclusion is a complicated ballet where all the principal dancers mm -hmm. must be performing to the same music. I was mainstreamed in kindergarten with a lovely aide. We were dancing the Nutcracker and everyone else was dancing Swan Lake. The composer is the same, but the performance is very different. I was enrolled in the classroom, but not part of the class. And this is more often the case than not. So then I was like, okay, I'm so interested in hearing more about Otto and I shared everything with the 700 folks in the, in the class and we got a lot of comments and then we had a conversation. Um, and in that conversation, I learned so much about Otto um, and now he's gonna be sharing all of these uh, things with us. So before we start, does anyone have any questions? And when I say start, I mean, we've just got our seven questions and seven answers. Does anyone have a comment or question before we jump into those? And Christy, I don't know if you can see the chat because, because I can't. Hmm. That's okay though. Any comments or questions or worries or thoughts? Um, well, yeah, I'll wait. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's all right. All right. Go ahead and jump in. If you have questions, we're happy to respond. The first one at, um, that we sent was, what would you like to tell us about your educational background? So Shelly, can you see this screen and can yes. you share? Go ahead. Yes. Auto typed. If you are referring to school, I have done it all. First, I was mainstreamed with an aide. Then I was enrolled in a class with all disabled children. We were the island of misfit toys. Then I spent two years on a school for autistic kids. Then I learned to type. The last five years have been spent in private schools with an academic focus and a dedicated communication partner for the last three years. 
I am proud to say I am nearly finished with my ninth grade classes. This may not seem impressive, but I did this in just five years. I had no academic goals before I learned to type. People are always intrigued and want to know how I learned things without direct instruction, like spelling. I remind them the world is a classroom and, um, let's see, I can't, okay, there we go. Um, less, and lessons are around you all the time. You just have to observe and absorb. So speaking of absorbing, I'm gonna just have everyone take a minute to sort of read Otto's words. And Otto, is there anything else you'd like to share related to your educational background while everybody is kind of taking in your school experience? And then Julie, there were a couple questions in the chat that I'll weave in, so just Great. know. Great. I'm also going to make my dog stop talking, so or talking. <laughs> but I'll be back. Everyone was always well-meaning, just missed the mark. Everyone was well-meaning, but just missed the mark sometimes. And so, Are you talking about your educators and everyone that you worked with? Yes. Yeah, so Otto, they have kind of two questions for you. One, they want to better understand what kind of technology you're using to type. And then the other is a more um, feeling one, but I'll ask you that one second. They just are curious what you're using technology-wise, hardware-wise, I guess. Um, Auto types on a QWERTY keyboard, right? So we have we have different modalities that we use all the time. He has um, the picture of him with the with the monkey arm and the Bluetooth keyboard. Um, we have that. We have waterproof terraslate paper that we use. That's the QWERTY. Um, we have this uh, super cool plastic one that has a key guard on it that he used when he very first started typing because it was harder for him to um, organize his body and get to the get to the letters so that one has a key guard on it um, and kind of every variation uh, he has a number board that we made just a you know in a sleeve uh, we, <laughs> we have we always have whiteboards with markers for just quick stuff um, so, and then he, he knows some sign and he has some word approximations. So, um, we kind of use anything and everything that's available. So Shelly, I, for anybody's question, Shelly, I put the picture of the monkey arm. Oh up. yeah. So, um, uh, Otto was in a conversation with me a week ago or so, and I got to see Otto using this monkey arm, which is really independent typing um, using this particular piece. Do you want to explain that further, Shelley? Sure. Um, Otto learned to type through a technique called facilitated communication, which just means that when he very first started to type, he needed support. He needed physical support all the way at his wrist of his right hand of his dominant hand to organize his body and it was a support that pulled away from the keyboard so he had to fight the resistance of the um, communication partner and the speech therapist um, to in order to slow down his coordination of muscles and to get to the actual key that he was trying to spell um, so that's where he started um, and the communication partner would sit on his right side and then support his arm and the support continually faded. Um, and then now I sit on his left and nobody holds his arm at all. Nobody touches his body at all. I hold the keyboard um, 
because it's difficult to still do that motor planning. So I hold the keyboard close to him. Um, there's an emotional component too that happens um, when you're typing. And so that's why even though it's the same QWERTY keyboard on that um, uh, um, monkey arm, it's the same set of letters and everything else, the fact that no one's holding it and it kind of just seems like it's hovering in space is um, an emotional thing to get over for him. So that's what's kind of been um, nice about the COVID shelter in place is because we have the same setup every day. So he's exploring complete 100% independence with this typing. Um, so we're excited about that because we have the same keyboard, the same desk, the same chair every single day, all day long. And there's um, none of the problems with apraxia where if the table's a different height, the chair's a different height, the keyboard's not exactly the same. Um, all those things make his apraxia go haywire. And um, he has to relearn all those muscle memory that he had learned in the perfect position at home or whatever it is. So um, it's really nice that we're pushing the limit to his independence with his typing. So we're, we're kind of excited about what COVID sort of forced our hand to do. Um, um, and we, he did, when he started typing, before he had, before he had you know, a QWERTY keyboard, he had all different modalities of communication. We had PECS, the Picture Exchange Communication System, and we had thousands of laminated cards that had anything from an, a photograph to a stick figure. Um, and then we had the, um, the dynamic display devices like the Dynavox and the Alt Chat and the Touch Chat. And then we got an iPad that was the same thing. It had, um, it had an icon-based communication system in it where it was pre-programmed by the speech therapist or the paraprofessional. But the only choices in it were the words that somebody else picked for him. And um, that's one of the classic yeah, things he always wow. says is um, the only choices were, you know, they would put pretzels or chips when, you know, he had a whole idea of a different savory snack, which 26 letters affords him to be able to tell the flavor and the brand name, as opposed to just this little icon of the pretzel or whatever. Mm -hmm. So um, it really freed up his ability to, to present these type of ideas that were very stunted with an icon based communication system. Yeah, interesting, Otto, that one of the first things that was in the chat, I don't know if you guys can see the chat there, Shelly, too, but uh, people uh, were commenting that you have a way with words, and that was the thing that struck Julie and I, too. We just read and reread your emails so many times. Um, and so one of the things, and I don't know, uh, Julie, if you want to go to the next question or you want me to pull one from the chat yeah, let's do the seven questions and then pull and uh -huh. so please as you go feel free to ask them uh, just because like there's one about his communication system and you might get answers okay but i think it's it's great um the second question is how has paraprofessional been influential influential or helpful to you and this is what he typed in preparation for this conversation helping me with my self-confidence and words of encouragement are helpful Maya Angelou said, people will never forget how you made them feel. This is what I think makes a good paraprofessional. It's not about what they do specifically. It's about if you are made to feel worthy, valued, or competent. I appreciate when they run interference, like making modifications on the fly so I can access academics and activities. Seeing the world through my eyes and helping me advocate for sand hand sanitizer in the bathroom because the water faucet is too hard to turn or paper towels because the hand dryer is too loud. Paying attention to supporting my communication without speaking for me or being buddy buddy with my peers. Mm. I feel like Otto there's a entire chapter in this particular yeah. comment that is really beautiful. Is there anything you want to add right now Otto to this particular comment um 
Mm -hmm. While Otto's typing, people can look back and reread. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, I think you can start to see by some of his answers. There were questions, Otto, if you had sensory um, struggles, you know, and how you would give advice to pairs to help others with sensory. But you can see already this is a perfect example of how they worked out some of those things about the loudness of the dryer. <laughs> Some of my best support staff has been able to instinctively see my mood mm. by my by my coordination yeah. and no, no, no. and regulation. So I just want to reiterate a couple things based on what you just said. So Otto's saying, you can tell my mood based on how my body's functioning, right? My coordination really is related to my mood. And then the other piece that I want you to highlight when you look at this particular text for me is, it's about if you're made to feel worthy, valued, and competent. Otto later is gonna explain what that looks like, what it sounds like to make someone feel valued, worthy, and competent, but that's something we want you to really be thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, Moving on to the third question, can you share a little bit about typing to communicate? How does it work for those who have never experienced it? So we knew in preparation for this class that um, there will be many of you who've never worked with a student who types to communicate. And so we wanted to hear first from Otto, what is it like? So go ahead, Shelly. Um, it's funny because the more people type with him, you can tell when he's typing funny that so something that he thinks is funny or snarky because he gets the biggest grin on his face as he's typing it. So this was one of those times where he was um, enjoying what he was typing because he was visualizing it as he was typing it. So he had a big yeah. grin on his face while he was typing it. But anyway, so he said, it is just like any other form of communication where you can't speak and you use your big toe to hit tiny letters that are moving targets in front of your eyes and make you, and you make crazy looking movements with the rest of your body or wacky facial expressions or ridiculous sounds spill out of your mouth. And if you are lucky enough to engage your audience, even an audience of one, you will witness the shock and awe on their face when they read your text. The moment just before the first tear drops from their lower lashes because they doubted you, but there in print is proof of your intellect. It's like that. I use the imagery of a big toe. Of course I use my index finger, but most people have the same motor control with their big toe as I have with my index finger. <laughs> he encouraged he, one of the private schools that he was at, um, he encouraged his whole class to spend the school day with a letter board and I brought in letter boards <laughs> and to use their toe to point to the letters to get their wants and needs met, mm. to engage in class, to answer questions from the teacher. Um, and um, the teacher in turn had to do the same thing, you know, answer with just typing. Mm. So, um, it was a powerful day <laughs> for everyone. I can only imagine, and I'm thinking, Otto, that's every day for you. That's every, and I, your humor is not lost on me. I think the beginning of this is hilarious, right? It's just like, you know, anyone else's regular form of communication with all of that happening. Um, just so beautifully written and so uh, easy to imagine, but only sort of 
in small doses, not imagine living life typing. That's really different. Um, I'm noticing people are commenting. People are saying, wow, Otto, I have tears. I'm so moved by your wisdom. Um, and people are, are asking a couple more questions. Do you have anything else to say related to this, Otto? So this is just about typing and... Uh, yeah, like people wanted to know who came up with the idea, like who decided that, you know, Shelly, you talked about the progression of different types of um, ways to communicate. So they were curious when typing came up. So the history of, uh, go ahead, Otto, are you ready with that answer? Oh, he just said typing gets easier. What he was, um, he was answering to yep. the question, did you have anything else more to say? And he says, typing gets easier, okay. was his answer. Um, um, do you want to share a brief history? So uh, when did you learn to type? Whose idea was it? And uh, what was that transition like? Um, we saw a, um, on ABC News, a, a young man, his name is Dylan Barmosh, um, do his eighth grade valedictorian speech typing. And he, he was your typical typer. His body was all over the place, but his finger was controlled to, to type on his iPad and he uh, yeah. typed his eighth grade valedictorian speech and it was just beautiful. And at this point, Otto had no language. At this point, Otto had no academic goals. We were told that he had no receptive language. He had no expressive language. He was intellectually disabled. We'd be lucky if he ever, um, ever um, um, could even learn to separate recycling as a job, separate cans from bottles or whatever. Um, his, his, his future was really bleak. And that's what we were told because um, he was having trouble um, using PEPs. He was having trouble in any kind of ABA format. Um, he was having trouble um, with anything that required motor planning. Pick up the icon of the dog, Otto, um, and then he would just pick up the cat. Mm -hmm. And so he was nine, he was miserable. Um, he was in a really expensive school for kids with autism. He was miserable. And when we saw this video, um, another friend also had sent me a Huffington Post article about a young man who got to do his bar mitzvah using technology, which is unheard of. Um, normally, you can't bring any kind of technology into a synagogue, but this, this young man was allowed to use his typing and um, was able to do his bar mitzvah. So then, you know, he transitioned to, you know, becoming a man in the eyes of God. And, and so that was just so powerful to me. And in that article um, was this random speech therapist in the LA area, Darlene Hansen. And so I thought, well, I'll throw a thousand dollars at anything. I'll go up and see her. So we went up to see her and then she, she said, well, what are your expectations for Otto? And he was only nine at the time. And I said, oh, well, I want him to do um, valedictorian speech when he's in eighth grade, like joking because at this point, you know, he allegedly had no, um, um, uh, receptive language. He didn't know what words were. I was told that um, what he hears when I speak is like Charlie Brown's teacher, like bah, 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 bah. that's what I was told. And so when I said to Darlene um, Hanson, oh, I want him to do his valedictorian speech. And she goes, oh, like Dylan, I started teaching Dylan how to type when he was nine. So I was like, this is, this is just meant to be. This is the strangest coincidence of all time. And then right then, Otto just was completely engaged with her from the minute one. She spoke to him like a person, not like, because sometimes people um, talk to children with autism almost like dog training. Like they only use two or three word sentences. They don't use connector words. They don't, they don't use the English language. They use a very truncated sort of dog training kind of voice. And, um, but she spoke to him like he was nine years old going on 10. And, and um, so she sat down with him and, and she said, Otto, you've driven a long way up here today. Where did you drive from? And then on the Bluetooth keyboard with support, he types S-A-N space bar D-I-E-G-O. And then the little, you know, the little robot voice that comes out, I think it's Ryan or whatever the little voice that comes out says San Diego. And I was just in shock. And I was like, how did he know that? They told me he didn't know letters. And she goes, well, you, it, it says San Diego Freeway for an hour and a half. Like, what, what do you mean? How does he not know what San Diego is? And then um, 
Um, so then she goes, Otto, I bet your mom takes you lots of places there in San Diego. Um, where do you go where there's a lot of animals? And then I thought he was going to just type zoo because that's pretty much what the perpetual preschool of special ed is. You do farm animals, you do zoo animals. And so I thought, oh, okay, here we go. You know, he can type, he typed SeaWorld. He typed S-E-A-W, you know, space bar W-O-R-L-D. And I just, my jaw just dropped and tears start flowing down my face. And then she's like, mom, keep it together. Watch this. She goes, Otto, who's the president of the United States? And then he typed Obama. And then she goes, what kind of a school is he in? And I'm like, oh, he's in this functional day class. And she's like, oh, no, 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 he's smart. You got to get him out of there. And so we spent the next year um, trying to find a school for him that would allow him to access education through typing. But um, it was just such a breakthrough moment from, from the very beginning. Otto, do you want to say anything about that first experience um, typing? It was like Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> okay, I think I get the reference. Can you elaborate? How was it like Shawshank Redemption? I don't even know how to spell Shawshank. <laughs> Plus, I love that movie so much. But I want to hear how it's like that for you. For sure. Breaking out of a... of a prison of mm. breaking out of a prison of silence mm. one mm. letter at a mm. One letter at a time. Mm. Perfect. That's super helpful. Um, Otto, I'd love to, uh, people are asking, I know people want to know, when you talk or make noises while you're typing, can you explain that to folks? No, I have verbal tics. I wish I, I wish I knew why I do it. No, I have verbal tics. I knew what, I wish I knew why I do it. So well, that's super helpful for me and all the people that work with students um, who, as they're typing something profound about Shawshank Redemption, might be making other noises or saying something. And so a lot of folks that I work with say, you can kind of ignore those ver verbalizations because I'm not planning on saying or doing them and then just really pay attention to my words. So does that match, if I say, if, does that match what you think, Otto, the way that I explained it? Exactly. My body is on autopilot. Um, um. My body's on autopilot sometimes. Perfect. Thank you. I'm going to move to this number four because huh, it's clear to us your intelligence and gifts are so obvious. 
All you got to do is read the words you're typing. Um, tell us your thoughts for students for whom this is not as clear. So many people, I just are out there supporting students with autism that are brilliant like you are, Otto, and yet their school systems and their families are saying, you know, what's the zoo animal say and things of that nature. So how can we do a better job of getting to know and shine a light on each student's gifts and contributions was the question we asked. So we'll start with what you wrote for us. Be patient. It's like the time-lapse camera filming a flower or high-speed camera filming a hummingbird's wings. Both are miracles that our human eyes cannot appreciate their beauty. We need technology to assist in discovering these miracles. AT and AAC are just tools. The correct tools must be implemented to witness the miracles. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it might be a baby swan. If a person has only thought of a non-speaking individual as one thing, like a person would call every waterfowl a duck because this is the only waterfowl they have ever had contact with, they will miss the beautiful swan typist. So to extend your analogy, there are beautiful swan typists in every school system all over the country, but we just don't know yet. We just haven't given them the opportunities, et cetera. So far, my experiences with people who type to communicate are um, pretty amazing in that it's pretty, once we get that mode of communication going, it's unbelievable what we can learn about folks like you. Um, Otto, do you have any other comments about uh, beautiful swan typists or all those kids out there that maybe don't have access to typing yet? Yes, we are unicorns. <laughs> don't be afraid to try new. Don't be afraid to try new things. It's hard to fail. It's hard to fail every day, but every failure, yeah. it's okay, you can finish, is an Every failure is an opportunity to to regroup and try and try again. I want to extend that out to everybody who's supporting students who don't yet have buddy, 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 buddy. how do we regroup and try again and how do we try new things and give people access to what is so likely to be useful i'm going to move on to our fifth question what advice to paraprofessional what advice do you have for paraprofessionals to help them be their best self with all types of students was the question um Go ahead. And, and then Otto said, leave your personal problems at the door because we sense everything. I guarantee your worst day is still probably easier than our best day. Remember, every day is a day to shine. Every day is a fresh start. So wash yeah. off yesterday's crappy failures and don't take it personal if we don't meet your expectations. 
Remember, we live with these challenges every day. We never get to clock out or take a vacation from ourselves. What I'm finding, Otto, is that all of this wisdom has nothing to do with being a paraprofessional. It has everything to do with being a human. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They just a paraprofessional. We lose our sense of we lose our sense of humanity. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you, Otto. I'm going to move to the sixth question. Um, think about the support you received when you were younger. So back all the way, the time when you weren't communicating, and then the support you receive now. How has that changed as you've gotten older? What do you wish all paraprofessionals knew when you were younger? Now my support focuses on my ability and right to communicate. Before I typed, my support was task and skill focused with an emphasis on functional activities of daily living and safety. I wish they knew I am intelligent. I wish they spoke to me in the same pitch and cadence as they spoke to others, not a high pitched, slow paced, simplistic vocabulary way. So this is reminding me back to when you talked about really good support uh, comes from somebody who sees you as competent, even before you were able to prove your competence, right? So even before you were able to type out, do you have any additional comments or thoughts on that? And Shelly, did you, what year was it when you, you started typing? Um, 2014. 2014. <laughs> when you dig deeper beyond what is in front of your eyes, you will be you will be surprised beautiful um the next and last question we asked Otto prior to this discussion was we thought people would want to know more about your dreams and plans for the future. And also, just so you know, Otto, a lot of people are saying you have such a gift with words. Are you considering writing, etc. So let's start with this and then we can go further into more questions. Um, he said the possibility and you can tell he was starting to get tired because question <laughs> one had like nine sentences and then you could tell he was getting tired by the time he got to seven. Okay. Anyway. Um, <laughs> The possibilities are limitless. I want to go to college because I love learning. I imagine I will have a career. If self-driving car technology improves, I can share a beer with my friends. Mm -hmm. um, this is funny because he's 15, but a lot of his typer friends are older, like 30. Mm -hmm. So they all talk about drinking beer. And so it's funny because he, he doesn't drink beer. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's funny that... Um, that that's that's a, that's one of his goals to go. I, don't, I knew there was beer. a beer. Like you, I've been thinking about a beer all day today. So we <laughs> go have a beer anytime when you're a little bit older. Right? 
like quite a few years, but yes, I think it's fabulous. I just won't say anything to mom. Yeah. Um, so now at this moment, um, I want to make sure that if people have burning questions that weren't answered, um, that you have a chance to ask them. And the first one that I'll just share is, did Otto start spelling words, whole words or phonetically? And so you can combine whoever wants to answer, Shelly or Otto. Mm. Whole words. And that's what's so crazy is because my other two sons have terrible dyslexia and are horrible spellers. Yeah. And he spells like a spelling bee kid. It's crazy. And he spells words that I'm like, I don't even know if that's a word, buddy. And then I'll go and Google it. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even know that was a word. Like, how did you, how, how did you even know that? And so, um, yeah, so whole words. He just, um, and the only thing, he has two older brothers, you know, we did kitchen, kitchen mm -hmm. homework, every, every single hex, everything we had, I always paired the written word with the icon. Um, basically for anybody that was working with him more than him, I never thought he would read or even knew what letters were, but some of the icons and pecs are so obscure yeah. that you don't know what they're supposed to represent. So when I would make my laminated pecs or when I would populate the um, dynamic display devices, I always wrote the word of what that little stick figure was supposed to be representing. Yeah. Um, so there was consistency of whoever was working with him, but he always saw, um, he always saw printed words and then our whole house was filled with all those laminated labels, which I don't, is it more than words? Which is the, there's a, there's a, there's a class that you take when your kids do and they're like, Oh, go take this class. The regional center pays for it. But I think it's called more than words, but they encourage you to label everything in your house. This is a drawer. This is your bed. This is the bathroom. This is the toilet. And so you have words laminated and Velcroed to every inch of your home. So we did that. So every, every object in our house had a printed card on it. So, um, but how he knows how to spell words like technology or I don't know. Or I don't think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So Otto, I want you to answer that question and I'm gonna tell you while you're, so the question is how did you learn to spell all those really challenging words? And as you're typing, I'm going to share with you, Larry Bissonette and Tracy Thresher have shared with me, why is this so hard? People don't learn to spell during spelling tests. And I learned from CNN where the two comments people made. So I'm curious about auto. We think we have to teach it for people to learn it. The bad right. news is that's not true. I, Joyce, I'm not a good speller at all. I'm not even a good writer. I like to talk. So I would be in trouble, Otto, if I had to write all the time. He said, I think it's because we listen to podcasts. Mm. And no. and audiobooks. No. So I hear a Rich. Mm. Mm. I hear a rich vocabulary. Mm. And mm. when I yeah. think of words to and then communicate, I mm. see them as the actual I see them as the actual word. Mm. I think 
my brain is just wired like that. Cool, thank you. A lot of people get confused about that. And so I think it's really important to hear from Otto what that looks like. So for him, he sees every word, the whole word, and he's able to spell it. Um, I see a lot of questions. And um, one question that I heard, so Darlene and I are really good friends. So the person who uh, got Otto communicating a long time ago are good friends. And she said, have you asked Otto about his swimming? And I have not asked you about your swimming and I have no idea about it. So can you tell these folks about your swimming accomplishments? Because I guess they're vast. Another thing we have in common. Well, I don't have any accomplishments, but I like to swim. Wait till you hear this. Okay. Jeez, is there anything you can't do, Otto? <laughs> I swam on an ocean, open ocean swim team. I swim in the ocean without a wetsuit. The Relay team swam from Santa Santa Rosa Island to Bolita, the next summer we swam around the Island of the island of Ischia in in Italy. Swimming in the ocean is Is amazing. Mm. No mm. one asks mm. you questions. <laughs> mm. There's no There's no equipment. It's just you and the salt. It's just you and the salt water. That's what prompted us to, to get the Terra Slate um, get the terrace slate uh, um, letter boards because I would try and put a plastic letter board in my wet, in my, in my Speedo, right? My one piece. And, and it would cut me cause it's like hard plastic. And then I tried a laminated card and it got all mushy and, 
because I wanted, because I wanted to be able to communicate with him out, you know, a mile from the shore or in the, you know, in the case of the Channel Islands, you know, we were 40 miles off the shore. We were out in the middle of the ocean at the Santa Barbara Channel Islands. So I wanted to be able to know if a stingray, you know, or a jellyfish stung him or if there was a shark. I mean, because those are real, those are real things. <laughs> when they're out in the open ocean, sharks are a real thing. So, um, so I always wanted to be able to communicate, or if he was crying, if he got a leg cramp, I mean, kids get really bad leg cramps or kids throw up or kids, you know, kids, kids get hypothermic and they can't move. Um, Otto also has a seizure disorder. So I would want to know if he were feeling bad or if he were having an aura or something. So, so those are, those are realities. So that's kind of the genesis of how we even came across having waterproof paper. Mm. So, um, but yeah, he, he, um, is out there. Um, and I started, I started swimming with him, um, after he had a grand mal seizure prior to that, he just swam with the team and he didn't have a support swimmer with him. But then after that, um, the neurologist said, if he's going to swim, he has to have a support <laughs> swimmer. Cause if he did have a seizure, you would have to keep his head above water till, you know, till, till help could come. So, but prior to that, um, but nobody physically helps him. You're just, you're just an arm's distance from him. You're, you're there just in case. So, um, but yeah, that little picture um, was when he first joined the swim team and his classmates did a video of him. Um, Somebody so said that's that's awesome. auto on a video. So you must be a YouTube sensation also, like seriously. Yeah. He said, in our first conversation, he said, I'm Googleable, which was super helpful when I was trying to pull pictures of you. Uh, you can Google Otto Lena and you can find um, his swimming and you can find a lot of different things about him. I want to be respectful of Otto's time and Shelly's time. And thank you so much for joining us. What I'd love for you to do, Otto, is just share any last thoughts. And what I'd love for everybody who's listening and live right here to share your last thoughts with Otto, because he'll be able to read them after, uh, after this airs and he can read all so as Otto's typing everyone can type and then we'll pause and listen to Otto's last uh, thoughts <laughs> I'll put, oh, you can't see them. Oh, maybe you can see them in the chat. Oh, are you putting it in the chat? I was going to put it in the chat. Yeah. So Shelly, in addition to putting it in the chat, can you read it out? Uh -huh. I want to thank everyone for their time and their commitment and the beautiful sentiments from, from last week. All the, um, the love letters. Yes. <laughs> he was, he, he blushed. He was just so um, taken aback by, um, by everyone's um, beautiful words and thoughts and 
Well, prepare to be blushing again, Otto, because wait till you see today's chat. <laughs> right. So that was after Otto, after they had just heard one sentence. And now they've spent an hour with you. So we're getting such beautiful, more love letters to you and love messages to you. So you'll be able to see all of them and we'll make, we'll make sure they come to you. Um, and when you publish your book, you've already got like 700 fans that are ready to buy it or whatever yes. you do. I think you've got like 700 new fans and followers. And Otto has agreed to help Darlene and I. Darlene and I are writing a book about communication for people who don't use words. So Darlene, the person who helped Otto communicate and uh, Otto's agreed to write in every chapter. So we're super excited about that. Otto said fantastic when you said about the 700 new friends. He said, fantastic. <laughs> okay. So thank you both, Shelly. Thank you, Otto, for your time. Christy and I were just going to share with people about part two really quickly. Um, are there any last thoughts that you have, Shelly or Otto? No, thank you so much. It's always wonderful when people are so respectful to Otto and, um, and want to hear his story. So it, it, it makes my heart feel good that um, people um, are willing to think outside the box. Um, I'm so happy that we found Darlene and that if there's other people that are willing to try just one more thing or, or, or learn uh, one different skill, um, you know, they can have a, a brighter future like Otto has. So thank you so much for all the work everybody does and um, for, for giving him this opportunity to share um, the things that he's learned. Have a great, safe, uh, weekend and um, everybody stay healthy. Yeah. Great. You want to say bye with your mouth? Uh, <laughs> bye. Otto. Great to see you. Okay, bye guys. Thanks, thanks so much. Okay, thanks. So as Otto and Shelly leave us, because they're going to go on about their day, Christy's just going to share if you're interested in learning about part two. We've got part two available. Um, and just so people make sure that they get on, we're gonna do more bonuses with students and things like this. I hope it was really useful. Christy, you wanna share? Uh, I'll need the screen. Um, oh. Yeah, Denise, I'm coming with him when he's 21. We're coming your way to Alaska for some good old beer. All right, we all have things to do too, but we, wanted, we had a couple of questions from people about part two. Um, and so I'm, I just wanna, go quickly, but I, my brain's tired and my neighbors are firing guns. Don't worry. It's safe. I just live out in the country. <laughs> it's just what we do out here. <laughs> Any of you who live in the country, you know what I mean? Um, so part two starts June 26. So some people thought it started May 26 and that they were late. Um, don't worry if you see the price up there and you're like, what? I, that's too much money. Um, you get the $40 off by using the password part two uh, at checkout, not password, the coupon. So when you check out, you just put part two in your cart and it'll be back down to the 49. And it'll be really the same rituals that you experienced in part one with Julia and with me. We're just going to go deeper uh, we probably are going to be a little bit smaller, so we're hoping that that will be a win-win, meaning you guys will have a little bit more opportunity to um, talk on the fly during our live sessions. They'll all be recorded, so if you're lucky enough to do something other than a staycation um, in the month of July and you're like, I don't want to hang out with you and Julie every Friday, they'll still be recorded. So if you want them maybe in the fall or you want to be one ahead of some of the new hires, then they can do part one in the fall and you'll be on part two and you'll feel more confident. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of it in a nutshell. There's the four sessions and then because Julie and I can't help ourselves, um, there are a couple bonus sessions. So if that just feels like too much, just come and go to whichever ones you want to attend live. Um, and then if you need to watch the others on demand, they'll always be a little less than an hour. So pretty bite size. Yeah. Any Good. questions that people have, but it's not too late. The discount's still there. Uh, and if you're saying part two of what, if you're just like, oh. I ended up here in a different way, like I came I through a portal that. through Facebook, uh, we have a class for paraprofessionals and this was a piece of it. We were so excited about Otto that we wanted to make sure all of our friends could watch this because I think Otto is pretty incredible, pretty inspirational. Um, so if you're just like, what is even part one? <laughs> uh, uh, Christy will put that somewhere where we put it in the chat. Yeah. 
we'll put that in the chat. So uh, share this with paraprofessionals because we're getting whole schools that are saying we want all our paras trained. We want to go through part one and part two, and we're saying yes to that. And it's been really exciting. So make sure to share with your administrators everything um, about part one and part two. We're going to also take make sure all the love for Otto that you wrote and thank you for taking the time to write those beautiful comments. We're going to make sure Otto gets those. I think he was very taken aback by the last group that we sent him. Yeah, I'll show you really quick um, in case anybody would, cares what the what it looks like. Um, if I can do it fast. If I can't, we won't. But if you are thinking about um, some of your colleagues who didn't join us in the first time or if you're new to it, this is what it looks like. Um, this is the dashboard for the part one on demand. Um, you're going to see a couple little things because um, my screen, excuse me, guys. Woo! Um, it just wants to be difficult with me. Ah, it's okay. It's just going to do what it is. Okay, anyway, it just welcomes you to the class. And then you guys remember all of Cheryl's beautiful graphic records. We have shared those with people as well. So there's a at a glance, and then we cleaned up the recording. So we took our live sessions and we cleaned up all the chit chat and made it kind of straightforward. And then they get the um, a, a transcript. Um, of the recording. They get the handouts. You remember all your tools and your resources every session and the key PowerPoint slides and then resources. So it's pretty much what you experienced if you did part one and you want to say to people, yeah, you should do it. It's just kind of layered by topic. And then if you're new to all of this, this is a four part, um, four sessions on how to really um, support children pre-k through 12th grade and we had so much fun we hope you guys did too that we made part two so that's why there's a part one and a part two we didn't originally plan that we were just going to do part one and then we had fun so we made a part two and yeah, some, some of you yeah, some of you will be joining us tomorrow. So don't worry that we're saying goodbye or something now. We'll say more goodbye tomorrow when we have our question and answer bonus session. So today was our autos bonus session and then we have question and answer bonus session tomorrow. So we'll see you then uh, if you're in part one. And if all this is confusing and you're like, I'm interested, but I don't even know where to go, then send uh, me an email directly, julie at inclusiveschooling.com or Christy, she'll put hers up. I'll put yours next. You're fine. Yeah. So just go there and say, I don't get it. Explain it to me and we will help you. <laughs> yeah. And um, post it on Facebook. We'll see you. If any, and tomorrow, um, for those of you who are hanging out, that's our next bonus session for part one. And how many questions did you answer today, Julie? 25, 32? 23 questions are answered. We're ready to go and load it up with all your questions that you've been posting. So if you had a question or a burning question, it's probably answered on our tomorrow's class. And if it's not, we'll take more and answer them because it, we really want you to feel prepared uh, to go into next year. And I'm get, we're getting so much love. I thank you for people who are saying, I loved part one. And thanks for the, all the extra videos and podcasts. You're welcome. And don't worry if you haven't checked them all out. It's there for you forever. Yeah, forever. Yeah. When yeah. you need it. That's why it's called on demand. Yeah. Just in time. Yeah. Okay, anything yeah. else for the good of the order crew? We'll make sure, like Julie said, that auto gets your love tonight. This will be recorded and put on your dashboard. For those of you who are in the class, you'll have this forever. So if you want to play it back or be inspired for fall, you'll have it forever. Yeah. Okay. I Thanks for all the love. We love it. Thanks so much. Have a good night. I think it's time to get one of those cold beers, Christy. <laughs> for sure. It's beer 30. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> All right. See y'all. Good night, everybody. I'll miss you, Julie. I know. I'll probably talk to you soon. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye.